Ele fala assim, o inverno passou, se foram as chuvas, aparecem as flores na terra, o tempo de cantar chegou. E é desse tempo que nós vamos falar nessa hora, nesta manhã, o tempo de cantar. O tempo de louvar, o tempo de glorificar, o tempo de agradecer, o tempo de dizer, Jesus, quero amar-te até morrer. E no fim do sábado, quando já despontava o primeiro dia da semana, Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb and behold there was a great earth earthquake for an angel of the Lord des descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow and the guards shook of fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answering and s answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are seeking Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Meus irmãos foram um período difícil. de luta, de angústia, de sofrimento, de dor, de aflição, de medo, de perseguição. E o próprio Jesus, ele fala assim que em todas essas coisas, nós somos mais do que, mais do que vencedores. E o apóstolo Paulo, lá em Romanos, ele diz... Not even death or life or the principalities and the uh, enemy and the, uh, what is in future, nor the depth can separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The faith it cannot be shaken. It is a firm foundation, foundation. And those women... They had gone through all sorts of affliction. They had gone through many things, many difficulties. And they saw their Jesus being crucified, their Jesus being whipped, their Jesus being humiliated, and Jesus being submitted to the empire. They're just being crucified between two criminals. They're Jesus. It was a period of great affliction for those women. And the word says, my brethren, that uh, Sabbath was over. And it came, this, the Sabbath day was over. And the Bible says that a night, uh, a crying can last one entire night. But there were already two nights. There were two nights. Two moments of darkness and sadness. And when Jesus is born, the, uh, the Bible says that the people that were walking in darkness, they saw a great light. And upon the region of the valley of death, there was a light for a moment in which the people was in darkness and they were living in the region of the valley of the shadow of death. Very similar to the situation of the Jewish there in Egypt in the period of the Passover. Darkness and sadness. 
And at that moment of darkness and sadness, the Lord had provided the lamb to take them away from the darkness and the sadness. And the love of suffering and pain and trial and affliction into a life of the, the freedom, of joy, of peace, of comfort, and refreshing and relief to take us away from a situation where we had right for nothing and to bring into a situation where we had the right for all things. And the situation of that woman and of the church at that moment was exactly this. And the Bible says, my brethren, that Jesus dies on the sixth day and as I said, he died for humanity. And on the day in which he dies for you, for me, for each one of us, because he already knew us before we were even born. He says something interesting on the cross of Calvary. He actually says two things, two very important things. The first was uh, forgive, Lord, because they don't know what they are doing. So Jesus on the cross of Calvary is proclaiming he proclaiming forgiveness of our sins. And then he says something else, my brethren. He says, it is finished. So the project of God for man is now finished. It's finished by the last sacrifice, the perfect sacrifice the sacrifice of the Lamb of God that came to take away the sin from the entire humanity. And the women, the ladies, the church, when they go to the tomb on a Sunday, they find out that the stone had already been removed. The obstacle was taken away. When Jesus dies on, on a Friday, he removes the obstacle. The veil of the temple was ripped from top to bottom. The veil that separated us no longer separates us. Man would now have free access to the presence of God without an intermediary. Because Jesus now was going to be the one that would prov provide her that, that would make a connection between God and man. So the women see that there is no obstacle. The stone had been removed. And Jesus is no longer dead. He has resurrected. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus is alive because he lives. We can have a tomorrow. Because he lives, there is no fear. So I'm going to finish this morning with this uh, word and with this song. Jesus is alive. And because he leaves church, I can have a tomorrow. I can believe in the tomorrow. There's a hope.
Brother Brandon, peace of the Lord. I'd like to invite you to stand up. Reverence to reading the word, which is located in the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter eleven. First Corinthians chapter eleven. I'm going to begin the ministration of the Supper of the Lord. From verse 23. First Corinthians 11 23 says the following For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was bet betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. It is my bo body, which is broken for you to do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is this, the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drink this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the, the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of this cup. For who, he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many may, may uh, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. My brethren, this has been a concern of mine to relate to the church and to the brethren what the Lord has given to us as a revelation. And the revelation that the Lord has given us is regarding the doctrine. Because the doctrine it has and it, it needs to be lived. The doctrine needs to be relayed and placed in our daily lives, in our lives, as a way of life. And today we are going to take part in the Supper. And the Supper of the Lord is one of the feasts of the Church. It's a moment of intimacy where the between the servant and the Lord is a privilege that we have. Because uh, from the moment in which we take part in the Supper, we are proclaiming the return of the Lord Jesus. We are decreeing our assurance and our victory in Jesus. The Bible has several periods. I'm not going to extend too much. It's going to do it very quickly. The Bible has several periods. And we can uh, highlight three periods that we find in the biblical history. The first is the New Testament, in which Jesus introduced himself as a a God of Israel, God introduces men as man, as a family, and the people, and then a nation. Actually, he's, he meant Old Testament. And then God began to manifest on behalf of these people. And then we see the ministry of Jesus, uh, his earthly ministry, in which Je the Lord Jesus, he came to show to us the new kingdom, the salvation, not through the law, but salvation through grace. Because salvation is for everyone, and not only for a people, for a single nation, but the entire humanity. And then we see the history of the church. They came all the way to our days. And so if we look at all this, we'll see that the Bible completes itself. 
the Bible completes itself and the doctrine that was implemented by Jesus on the Supper of the Lord. On the last uh, celebration of the Passover, where the disciples there thought that they were going to take part on, on a, a cultural event, on a Jewish celebration, a Jewish feast, Jesus there begins to implement the doctrine. And the doctrine is, does not cancel the Old Testament, no. The New Testament does not cancel the Old Testament, much on the contrary, it gives sequence to it. Men say that the Old Testament is cancelled, is forgotten, no, much on the contrary. The New Testament, Jesus there, when he begins his new ministry, he implements, it gives sequence to what the Father had placed for the people. The prophecy is fulfilled. And now in the life of the church, we also leave this doctrine. So in those last years, our concern is exactly this. And having a church that is linked to the doctrine. It is not worth for us to be only a part of the denomination. It's not worth to be just a label of a church. You need to know the doctrine. We need to leave the doctrine. Because it is the doctrine that will cause you to be able to withstand the trials of this life. The doctrine is what is going to cause you to accept the project of God. It is the doctrine that when you open up your heart and you leave the doctrine, you begin to understand the entire project of God. And the Supper of the Lord establishes this. Jesus, when he uh, presents the bread and the wine, it's no longer those elements, the, the traditional Jewish Passover. Now Jesus introduces two elements, the bread and the wine. And it speaks exactly about this. The main basis of the doctrines is this, is the bread and the wine. The bread that represents the church, that represents the body of Christ, the wine that represents the blood of Jesus, which is the Holy Spirit. It is the basis. That's why Paul, when he, in 1 Corinthians, he mentions, and he had learned from the Lord Jesus. Paul, he had discerned what it is to live in the body, what it is to live in the spirit. That's why the text finishes in this way, because whoever drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. It's very important that we understand the meaning of being in a body. The church does not walk in the body. The member of the church that lives in isolation, a member of the church is not linked to the body, is not linked to the fellowship with the body, is very dangerous. This is our greatest concern. Sometimes we keep nagging people and the sisters don't come and if you're missing service, the participation is low, let us pray. It's not like we want to, we're worried about numbers, that's not it. It is because many people have difficulty in understanding this. Being in the body is being in fellowship with the body. Being in the body is having direction from the Holy Spirit. Oh, but I can have this outside. Yes, for a while you can have this. But if you're not, because this is the revelation from God. If you are not living this and understanding this, if you are not discerning what is the body of, of the church, what it is to be in the body. And we know very well that Paul says that how important it is the body. And body has to have two things, main two main things, discipline and government. Yes or no? Analyze the human body. If a human body is not disciplined and doesn't have a governance, 
it will do um, absurd things. If you don't have discipline with your health and with your food, if you are not disciplined in being careful, you can run into s many dangers. Yes or no? You eat s foolish things, you drive in a reckless way. Don't. Oh. If you are not disciplined, you are running to several risks, great risks. And what is the governance? The governance is, is the head. We have the head. We have a common commandment, and the, which is the brain. When the brain sends the commandment, if the body does not obey, it is difficult. Imagine a brain saying, let us turn to the left, and the whole body, the tennis is all body going to the left and then the, the arm wants to go to the right. It's difficult. And we know that the body, the body is Holy Spirit. The guide us, the guide us to understand this. And we are the body of Christ. We are the church of Christ. That's why we need to understand and discern what the Lord has for us. What is the main project of, for the church. It is the revelation that God has given us. Many times I have my own projects. I have my own projects. I have my plans for my family, for my professional life. Everyone has. But if we want to understand, if we want to proclaim the return of Jesus, if we want to be a part of this body, which is the body, because the body is what was going to be taken away. Only the ones who are linked to the body, when Jesus returns, the body, the church is what going to be taken away in the rapture. So in order for us to be linked to the body, we need to discern what God has for me, what God has for my family, and what God has for us as brethren in Christ. So this supper today, my hope is that the Lord may bring this and open up our understanding. May God cause us to understand and discern what it is that I need to do in order to be linked to the body of Christ. What do I need to do in order to have the governance from the Holy Spirit? Not my own governance, not only to satisfy what I want, but to bring joy to the Lord. Amen. May this supper serve to us as a moment of awakening, as a way for all of us to have the assurance that we are linked in Jesus through salvation, and that we may all live in fellowship with the body in the benefit of being here. And today God has given a spiritual gift, and the Lord has shown that during the praises that angels have been sent there was a conductor that was conducting the, the praises, and all of us received a great blessing from the Lord. The sadness were removed, their infirmities were taken away, lives were, were strengthened in the Lord, and we were, we were greatly blessed by God. We all had uh, one single thought, and our, our thought was to live in heaven. I invite the Dickens to come to the front. Ask Evandro to pray for the bread and Wayne to pray for the wine. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Praise the Lord. That you may sanctify this bread. That means your body that was wounded 
that was broken for us in the cross of Calvary. And that in this moment, your church may turn back to this sacrifice, Lord. We pray to you, therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Let us sing a song. We're going to participate all together. The elements are going to be distributed. And at the end, after everyone rec has received, we're going to participate all together. This supper is it's not the supper of the Christian Church of Maranatha. This is the supper of the Lord. So you ha are in fellowship where you congregate. If you are in fellowship with the Lord, you can participate with us with, you know, on this banquet. The children do not participate, but they are blessed in the same way. Still, as soon as they turn 15 and they baptize, they will participate in this celebration. This is a feast of the church, of the body of Christ. Okay, two on the back and two on the front.
momento é um momento onde você deve estar. Esse é um momento em que você precisa falar com o Senhor. Você está acertando com o Senhor. Você está Because he left for us teachings. And us, our standard is to be based on the life of Jesus, not on man. Because he's the one, because he's the one who died for us. Now we need to speak with the Lord. Place in your life before the altar of God so that you may understand and discern what it is to be in the body. Is there anyone else missing? Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The ones who can, let us kneel down. If you can't kneel down, you can remain standing. Lord to Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. My children, peace be with you. The peace that the world can never give you. And at this moment, my love extends upon you in an abundant way that surrounds you and I bring to your memory the sacrifice of my son in the cross of Calvary which is represented by the bread which is in your hands. My children, he suffered in, on your behalf. The whipping, he was spitted, the humiliation, the thorns, the crown of thorns, the nails, all of it for love of you. Because of the sinful nature you deserved, he took upon himself in order to give victory. He overcame death, resurrected on the third day, not to give you life, eternal life. At this moment, in your hands it is what represents the blood, the blood, and He gave each drop of it to send you the Holy, the Holy Spirit that will be the Counselor, the same one who is bringing comfort to three of my servants in the morning. They are anguished going through difficult dif situation, but I tell you, my daughters, you are mine, and I am your shepherd. I dried up your tears, and I give the renew of your strength to continue moving forward. And I tell my children, as you participate in this moment, do this with fear of the Lord, remembering that soon you will be with me in the glory. I am sanctifying you this morning. The supper will be brought in order to bring joy to you, but it will also serve as an edification and purification so that you may remain and with the proper means so that when my son returns, you will be taking part in the rapture. Pay attention because soon your, the trumpet will be sounded, your name will be called, and I will rapture 
and it will take you away from this world that oppresses you. And it will bring you to my presence where there will be only joy and happiness in my presence. Glory to Jesus. Let us all participate together, firstly of the bread and then of the wine. Hello, Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let us sit down. We're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. We thank God for the opportunity to be in your house. We praise you for this great blessing that you have prepared for your church, Lord. We praise you for everything in the name of Jesus. Let's sing a song as the cups are being co collected.
Amen. The children will sing a song. Wait, wait a second. Yeah. If they, if there is no lyrics there, they don't sing. Neither do I. Jesus. I'd like to invite the church to stand up once again.
Quanto Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Lord God, we praise your name, Lord. Because before your voice, there's nothing that can prevent us from receiving the victory. Glorify, Lord, because you are everything for us. You are our strength. You are our help. You are our joy. You are our salvation. And that's why this morning, in a single voice, we want to exalt and praise and glorify your holy name. Receive our adoration and take us home in peace so that we may have a day, another day in your presence and that the service in this evening may be also another spiritual celebration where life may surrender to your feet and we joy will praise your name Lord is a prayer we say in the name of Jesus Amen in your name we say that a wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the love of God our eternal Father the sweet and tender consolations and this gift of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore Amen the church may sit down if, 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 if don't allow them to sing a song, they will, they will beat me up. So let us sing. I have to go fast here to, to give them time to sing.
Continue. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, this is the Lord, my brand. Seven thirty, huh? Yeah? Seven twenty, actually. This is the Lord. Yeah, you six fifteen.